anaitwa Major hapa ndani ya Radio Jambo usiniharibie mood na mimi naitwa Michael Ndeko shukran sana kwa locked in na vile nilikwambia tuko na special guests hapa ndani ya building na nataka tujue more about Kenya Climate Innovation Center so nitawapa mkono na wajintroduce kidogo karibuni sana Asante. Asante sana. Yeah, maybe we can start by knowing your names. Na let's explain more about the organization you come from. Uh, maybe I can go. Okay. Uh, Asante sana. Tayari kwa jina naitwa Tobias Bele. Mm -hmm. Tobias Bele, I am in charge of communication and knowledge management, basically mambo ya mawasiliano at uh, the Kenya Climate Innovation Center. Mm -hmm. Kenya Climate Innovation Center is a social impact organization na tunafanya kazi na businesses ambazo uh, zinashughulikia mambo ya climate change okay. in one way or another businesses that are innovating solutions mm -hmm. to climate change okay. so we do this in five uh, thematic areas uh, agribusiness uh, mambo ya ukulima mm -hmm. uh, waste management uh, um, commercial forestry mm -hmm. uh, things to do with water uh, mm -hmm. things to do with renewable energy as an alternative source to you know burning fossil fuels and all that mm -hmm. so that is what we do kenya climate innovation center is an organization that has been there since 2012 and we have worked with quite a number of, uh, of uh, businesses i think i'll come to that later but for now as an introduction i'll just leave it at that yeah thank uh, you mm -hmm. Wizala na 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 fanya na. Yeah, sorry, huh? Eh, tina ni road engagement na fanya na Pathfinder International. Pathfinder. Yes. Okay. Kama mukugenzi wa advocacy and engagement. Niko hapa Kenya, lakini pia na fanya organization muzima tu koko nchi tofauti tofauti shilini bara Afrika na bara Asia mm -hmm. kazi yetu sana sana ni mambo ya afya ya wamama oh, okay. na pia tuko kwa mambo ya tabia ya nchi mm -hmm. climate change and health mm -hmm. na tunaangalia venye mambo ya mabadiliko ya tabia ya nchi ina affect mambo ya afya ya wamama okay. na jamii mm -hmm. So sana sana hapa Kenya tuko na um, tuko na tu, tuko tunafanya kazi katika uh, county bill na Robi na pia tuko Homa Bay mm -hmm. na kazi sana ile tuko nayo ni hiyo ya mambo ya climate change na pia how it affects the health of women and girls pia tunafanya mambo ya uh, economic empowerment for women Mm -hmm. and uh, health leadership for women mm -hmm. uh, and also peer to kokwai agenda ya UHC so ndio na sasema tumekuwa kwa munda katika Kenya we are 60 years old yeah. i think we are one of the oldest organizations in this country pathfinder yeah? yes all right. Now, yes. me muhimu kwamba how climate change affects women and girls. Mm -hmm. Now, I'll also be interested to hear more about that. But for now, let us hear more about uh, Kenya Climate Innovation Center, uh, Mr. Tobias. Uh, just recently, COP28 in Kakule, Dubai, mm -hmm. na nikitu which has been happening annually. Now, it's all about easy countries coming together to discuss how to combat climate change. First off, I think what when you understand climate change. Nini. Yeah. Maybe na iyo. Then from then you can also tell us um, what aspects Monitorkule now how um, you're looking to incorporate them in terms of creating a sustainable um tuaji, sustainable development ambazo zinazasaidia ku uh, minimize in Kenya the climate change. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Now um, many people perceive the conversation about climate change to be very complex. And unfortunately, even if we make, uh, you know, there are complex terms, there are technical jargon, when you talk about negotiations at COP28, mm -hmm. not everyone understands exactly what that means. Mm -hmm. But you know, climate change affects every aspect of our lives, be it health, the way she has mentioned, if uh, there are adverse changes in, 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 in 
the climate we will not have the same kind of uh, you know weather weather patterns we have extreme weather patterns like floods like drought like last year we back home we almost got nothing from the farms you know and that can yeah. be attributed to, mm -hmm. to to climate change and when we break it down to the simplest way possible for people to understand how exactly this affects their lives how they do business how they perceive health how they do every aspect of our lives then people will will, will understand it more but just to break it down you know what we miss here is of global warming uh, greenhouse gases and temperatures and rising temperatures rising and all that and maybe if I attempt to to, to, to break it down in, in very simple terms mm -hmm. well the earth in apata jua the, the sun's rays as UV rays from the atmospheres in Apuja chain. Now, a part of those rays are emitted back into the atmosphere as heat. Now, there are certain gases within the atmosphere, water vapor, CO2, methane, they trap that heat and re-emit it back to the earth Where? in the form of heat. That is the complex explanation. Okay. Geography, like in so, <laughs> so in, in a heat, uh -huh. uh, back to earth. And that's why we call them greenhouse gases. greenhouse, mm. If when you are farming or stuff like that, greenhouse, So in these climate conversations, greenhouse gases, emissions, global warming and all that. So even your effect yeah yeah your global warming. So when certain industrialization activities happen. Mm -hmm. that involve burning of fuels, <coughs> fossil fuels and all that, they release more of those greenhouse gases back into the atmosphere. Mm. So in a increase the temperature. In a increase your temperature. Because the more these gases are there in the atmosphere, the more we, we have higher heating temperatures in the atmosphere. So on our e conversation that we have at COP and everywhere else, mm -hmm. we are looking at how do you ensure that uh, you know we reduce emissions mm -hmm. in how we do our manufacturing in different industries and all that. And that's why you're, you're seeing this back and forth conversation about reducing greenhouse gas emissions. So the COP conversation, or in Aqua 2, how exactly do we ensure that the world doesn't warm too much to an extent that we can no longer sustain life on Earth, you know, to ensure that our agriculture is not affected, to ensure that how we do trade is not affected to ensure that health is not affected for the first time in the COP28 to learn a mambo ya health in a agenda. Because Babu, when we have extreme weather conditions, uh, Afia, uh, people get affected. You get we have waterborne diseases. We have we have all these kinds of diseases. So that was what the conversation was all, was all about, just to try to break it down. And the different targets, different goals that world leaders and different stakeholders mm -hmm. through those conversations. So how do we feel like the, 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 the declaration we had at COP28 was an agreement that we face out fossil fuels. Kuna uh, some stakeholders in Yolkawa that was not as strong enough declaration that we should have made a declaration that we should totally face it out. Just before we continue, yeah. you can now break down kuna mtu anaweza kuna skia yeah. and levy fossil fuels ni zipi. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, so fossil fuels involve burning of coal. Uh, basically natural gases and and, and and all that. And if you look at the conversation we had at COP, we were talking about transitioning to clean energy, mm -hmm. renewable energy sources. How do we tap into wind energy instead? How do we tap into solar energy instead? How do you ensure that the energy, because the world runs on energy, you know, this place runs on energy. East to do it runs on energy. In is in steam, that's mm -hmm. energy, mm -hmm. you know. Any industry, common manufacturing and all that, it boils down to energy. And those are the processes that Zinaungeza ISO, ISO gases into the atmosphere. So how do we use alternative sources of energy, you know, uh, renewable energy sources, wind, wind power plants and all that. So that's that's the conversation and that's why we go on our own as we transition to just, you know, en just transition to energy systems and all that. So that's what we're talking about, okay. basically. So in short, for example, using coal, meat, you know, yeah, yeah, 
yeah. using things natural elements kwa mfano jua maji na upepo yes all right uh, ruth pia ningependa kuuliza swali uh, what commitments to support climate and health initiatives kutoka cop28 are we likely to benefit from wanzi ya mali mwanangu amefikisha ningetaka ku waelekeze kuwaeleza um wasikilizaji uh hii kongamano la tabia ya nchi ilikuwa ishirini na nane kwa hivyo tumekuwa na kongamano zingine na hizi kongamano kongamano zilikuja because uh umoja wa mataifa ulionelea kwamba if we don't act we will perish together yes so it doesn't matter kama wewe uko mataifa yenye ni developed ama wewe uko taifa yenye sio developed kama sisi ama pingine ko lakini mambo ya ubadilifu wa tabia ya nchi ina affect kila mtu mahali popote lakini japo ya maana ni kujua kama sisi wenye tuko bara Afrika tuko affected more kuliko wale wengine sisi hatutoi uh, we are not contributing as much to climate change kama wengine lakini madhara yenye iko inatu inatuduru sisi sana na sisi zaidi eh, kuliko Africa. wale wengine hmm. so tukikuja kwa venye mwenzangu amesema kwa mara ya kwanza ndio tulipata wale uh, wakuu wa iko kamano ama the presidency wamekubali ya agenda ya health ikuwe part igawaji haikuwa part of the agenda lakini tulikuwa na siku yenye tulikuwa tunaongea mambo ya afya afya in uh, mabadiliko ya 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 ya, ya, ya mtabia la nchi ama climate change mm-hmm. so tunaangalia health and climate change mm-hmm. so kuna mambo kadhaa yenye ilikuwa ilitokezea huko mara ya kwanza tumeona pia uh, COP28 kongamano la 27 tuliongelelea mambo ya uh, hasala na madhara na kukakuwa kuna pesa yenye itatengwa hazina what we call the loss and damage mm-hmm. So for the first time also tumeona pia ma kulikuwa na push kutoka kwa kwa kwa, kwa Afrika ama nchi za bara Afrika Asia wenye wameadhiriwa wame sana to push that we have to have that and people should pay mm-hmm. for the for the for the for the, what they have done and especially the developed world you know wao sana sana wame contribute to the uh, climate change so tumeonelea kwamba hiyo imeidhinishwa na pia kuna mpangilio kwamba fedha itawekwa lakini hiyo mpangilio tunangoja tuone kama wale wenye who hold responsibility and uh, who have been the people who have made us to be where we are tuko tumefika 1.4 degree Celsius tumesema hatutaki kupita 1.5 juu sasa tukipita hapo Hmm. basi itakuwa baya kwa kila mtu. So tunataka ile 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 commitments imewekwa ni kwamba we will stop the emissions. The developed world ama mabala yenye kama Marekani, Asia, um, Europe, Europe mm-hmm. wenye dio wana contribute sana watajaribu ku transition ili tupunguze na pia venye kumekuwa na madhara mingi kwa sisi wenye hatujakuwa developed then kuna ile pesa wanafaa kulipa ya kugarimu hiyo hiyo hiyo, hiyo madhara kiasi so that is what we are calling the the, the, the loss and damage mm-hmm. hazina lakini pia tunasema isikuwe tu ni mjadla ama promises are they putting money to that yes. so hiyo ni kitu tuna, tuna, tunaona inaweza tu, 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 tu uh, inaweza benefit africans asians and us who are mostly affected but again tunaangalia pia hiyo fedha itaenda wapi you know climate change ni biashara mzuri sana na ni biashara juu wale pia developed 
wako na innovations wako na equipment mm -hmm. wanaweza tuuzia lakini kuna ile vitu zenye haziwezi uzwa mm -hmm. kama mambo ya afya yule mama mwenye hawezi fika hospitali mm -hmm. juu hospitali imezongwa na maji ile barabara imeharibiwa na maji yes. sasa hizo vitu si watu unaweza uza upate kuna kitu unauza ili upate fedha so kuna that we are calling adaptation na hiyo pesa hiyo tunahitaji sana ya kutusaidia sisi tukue to adapt to the climate change tuweze kuishi maisha ya kawaida sio equipment sio uh, construction sio mambo mingi sana how do we train our people to be like uh, the agents of change mambo ya kulima mambo kama hayo so kuna hiyo opportunity ya hiyo hazina pia tumeona kuna mapendeleo tumepata ile tunaita um, the, 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 the health declaration it was signed by i think now it, the last time i checked we had over 140 countries out of is it 197 yeah. yes 197 so wame wameidhinisha hiyo mjadala ya kuwa tukiangalia hii mambo yote mambo ya health ikuwe pale mambo ya afya ikuwe pale ikuwe central to the discussions that we are having ya climate change so tunasema pia sio kusema tu ikuwe central lakini mnumetenga pesa pesa kwenda kwa mambo ya health mm -hmm. mwenzangu alikuwa ananiambia tukiingia hapa sikuwa nimejua kit ile pesa imetengwa niliona watu wa UAE I love Emirates yes it was Oh, 2.7 billion. Towards so, Africa? No, no, uh, just the health component in general. Oh, towards the health? Yes, 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 yes. Yes, the health component. Lakini pia hiyo pesa, hatujesema ni Africa. So, ni kiasiga, ni kiwagoga, ni takuja kuitu pia. So, kwa sisi wenye tuna push, ama advocates, we want to see that a lot of this money that has been committed is not only being committed, lakini pia, Commitments in a tennis when I your feather in a end of Mahali in a hitajika na sana sana mapoya health because health is the human face of uh, climate change. Right. We all what we do is for our existence. Yeah. If we don't exist, then mm -hmm. there is no need for anything else. Mm -hmm. yes, so, very quickly before turning to the next question, Mongolia African states coming together just very recently before COP28, Kulikwana Africa Climate Summit, it was successfully held up in Nairobi. At a rice wet hayo. How important was it for African countries to come together first before we can collectively put together Maunietu uh, Katikeo COP28? Okay. Kusiana na climate change. Okay. Ata kabla dijibu hilo swali. Kumara kwanza sasa ni njua loss and damage kwa kiswahili ni Hasara na madara. I didn't know that. Anyway, um, unajua natoka kwa mabe so Kiswahili chango. <laughs> yeah. So unajua this conversation about climate change to a given extent it's it has been an unfair conversation. Why? Because unaona when you talk about the greenhouse gases, when you talk about the emissions, they come from industrialization. Africa is not the most industrialized continent. The western countries are you know, you know, we talk about China, we talk about Europe, we talk about uh, the Middle East and all that. So, when you talk about they are most responsible for the emissions. But it has also been led to their industrialization and development, you get. So, you, you, like the top 10 emitters, we have China, which accounts for like 31% of global emissions. Then we have the USA, we have UAE, Germany and all the rest. So at the conversations when you try now start negotiating what are we going to do how do we get from here well how do we get climate financing it is unfair in the sense that they are responsible mostly for the problem that we have but also wound your wakuna wezo zaidi kuisuluhisha and yet we are the ones that are hurting the most so they are the perpetrators na vile vile wao ndio lazima watusaidie kupata hiyo suluhisho mm -hmm. you get so that in that sense it's been unfair and now to come to uh, the africa climate summit tunajua hapo awali uh, most countries most african countries uh, wamekuwa wakienda kwa hii conversation ya cop 
Kiviao, yeah. you know, this conference of parties, Kiviao. And it's all about negotiations, you know. I, I know Uliskia, uh, a lot of what was being said, you know, what do we do, how do we go about this, how do we uh, allocate certain finances to this. So there is this African say that ukienda Kiviako, where is it in Islam? Akini mkishika, mkishika mana, mm -hmm. you can accomplish so much. Two heads are better than one. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. no, no. So the Africa Climate Summit, it was important for Africa mm -hmm. to have a unified position ahead of COP28. Mm -hmm. To go there with one position. And that wa that's why the what we call the Nairobi Declaration was very important. Mm -hmm. Because it was a position that was ratified by all African states. Yes. Ya kwamba, haya ndiyo mambo ambayo tunataka yatiliwe manani katika in these conversations. And it, it gave us a better negotiating power. Mm -hmm. Ya kwamba, we were not just going to the table kubembeleza, mm -hmm. you know, and to present a moral argument. Ya kwamba, mtufanye hivi, but tuliko tunayenda hapo kwenye meza kama equal partners. So that was very important. And it was one of the reasons why the loss and damage fund, what my colleague Ruth calls Hazina ya Hasara na Madhara. It was operationalized. And you know, uh -huh. operationalizing that fund was very critical. And it was the, the fastest fund to be operationalized in the history of the COP conversations. Because loss and damage was uh, the first time we heard about it in the COP 27 in Egypt last year. And months down the line, we already have uh, 726 million US dollars already pledged to that particular fund. So that is a move in the right direction. How exactly are we going to access this money? Na ngependa kusema kwamba mambo ya climate change, it's a conversation about billions of dollars. And that's why it is kama watu wenye wako mawasiliano na hata watu wa, wa media. Mm -hmm. We have to follow the money, you know, beyond the pledges, beyond the agreements. Yeah. Tunafaa kufuatilia tujue hii pesa, who is giving this money, who is receiving this money, how is it used, na nani anahakikisha ya kwamba hii fedha inafanya kile ambacho kile istahili kufanya. Yeah. All right. Uh, Ruth Nikirudi Kwako, uh, because Masai na Kindia, the, the issues about women and girls face with climate change. Na kuna inequities ambazo wana face. One, I'd like to know what the inequities are, kwa wala mbaho wa yui, so that wapate awareness. And number two, um, ningependa kujua, how are you elevating women and girls, wawe vifa via change in their communities to enable them kusaidia wengine to lead resilient local and rights based solutions katika climate adaptation. Asante. Swali mzuri. Ah, uh, mwanzangu uh, amesema climate change tunaongelea mambo ya pesa mingi, sio hata billion, ni trillion. 2. Point. It is actually 2 to 4 trillion that is required for us to actually handle the climate change. Mm -hmm. Lakini where are we coming from? Why do we need all this money? It's because somebody didn't do what they were supposed to do, or they are not now addressing the mess that they created. Unfortunately, your mess here, climate change, in effect, kila mtu, lakini tunajua kuna kitego ya watu, women and girls, as much as everybody else is affected, lakini kina mama na wasichana wanatriwa sana. Kwa nini? How are the society in a equal? Wamama dio wana wako wana fanya ile kazi ya how do I put it? The society norms expect women and and especially women to do so much for them. So ukienda kule village mali ni metoka wamama dio naenda kuchukua kuni wamama dio na shukua maji wamama dio wana tafuta shakula. Also, I'm in a family kind of setting. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, I mabadli ko ya tabia la inchi na tuseme iyo ni 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 ile madala imefanyi kapa muda diotunaita the climate change. Lakini kuna mabadli ko ya hewa. 
we can't even tell when the, the seasons are. We, we used to know that April we have long legs. Sai hata hujui ni lini mnapada alafu kiangazi inakuja. Wakati mnafikiria kutakuwa na kiangazi mvua inakuja. Hilo nino ndio hiyo eh? So women and girls are affected more because of those society expectations that when all th th there is so much that they do that is impacted by 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 by, by climate change. Alafu pia ukiangalia hali ya, ya afya pia we have so many health needs we will go for our ANC tutaenda clinic ya watoto ya wamama na kila kitu hata ukienda kwa hospitali sijui kama uki wewe ukai kukua mbojo lakini ukienda kwa hospitali <laughs> utakuta population ile kubwa kwa hospitali ni wamama mm -hmm. na watoto na wasichana juu ya ile mahitaji tuko nayo yeah. kwa hivyo climate change ikikuja ina affect sisi sana sana kama uh, uh, kama 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 organization yenye inafanya sio ya kiserikali inasaidia na, na wengineo tuko kwa hii 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 hi, hi place ya uh, trying to work with women and girls there are several things that tunafanya kwanza society expects the discussion ya climate change not to be handled by women actually you will not see even if I ask those people who went like when I went to COP twenty seven, unaona wale walikuwa naongelea, wale walikuwa wamepewa cheo pale ya kuongea mambo ya climate change. We had more men than women. Twenty seven percent were women, but as everybody else was a man. And mm. they're asking. So sisi you to affect it, sana, lakini we are representation ni kidogo sana. So tunasema kwanza, we need to educate women and girls. To, to actually take their place because ni wao pia wako na solutions ni mimi ukienda nyumbani unaona wamama ndio wako kwa shaba ndio wanalima so what do we plant so that we we, 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 we we are climate resilient in the way we are doing our agriculture mm -hmm. pia nitakupea ukiniruhusu nitakupea one one example ya project moja tuko nayo kule Homa Bay we are trying to bring women to the uh, fishing sector because it is purely dominated by men. But why is it so? Ukiangalia kuna zile sama kidogo dogo za hito omena. Nani wanauzanga ukiada kwa soko? Wamama wa baba? Wamama. Lakini pia kwa vile kumekua na climate change, we are not getting enough of it in the lake. So what is happening is, yes, kuna ile kidogo inapatika na mimi mama ni kona pesa. Lakini pia sita pata, because I'm buying from a man, you are three ladies and you want my little fish that we have caught. So I will ask and demand for some favors. So there is what we are calling sex for, for fish. In effect, kina mama. Unaona, we may not be able to see the effect of climate change, mm -hmm. how it is affecting the women, but it is affecting because there is, you, you, you are everywhere in that shame. So how are we trying to help these ladies first? Mm -hmm. We are trying to educate them first. Then build the economic capacity so that, like for example, buy them a boat so that they employ the men, the fish belongs to them, they can buy from themselves. So, so nobody will come and demand favors from me yes. because now I have broken that shame. Mm -hmm. Then the other thing is Kuleta Kinambaba na Vijana who appreciate the role of women and to at least give them an opportunity, mm -hmm. so male involvement. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, you want to build their agency and uh, make them know that they can actually play a role because there is, kuna ile kitu ya pull back kama mama, mimi my place is in the kitchen. Wewa mustiana place yako ni, unajua you are supposed to be in the kitchen. Lakini watu wame so we can still have our place and what the society expects of us but then again we also need our place at the table we need to be appreciated women need to have a say in some of these things because they have capacities they know what needs to be done like in, we are not cultivated we are not being able to get that to, to we, we are, their contribution is not being felt so uh, mm -hmm. build, uh, 
sijui nitumie Kiswahili aje lakini building women and girls agency including making sure that we are taking care of health they are healthy especially their sex it's very important to remember that Mr. Safia need to understand I'm Mr. Tobias very briefly yeah KCIC by the Kenya Climate Innovation Center Ruth amegusia biashara la kuuza samaki na kama hivyo na organization yenu inasaidia it offers incubation capacity building na inasaidia kifedha biashara ambazo zinaonyesha kwamba they are developing innovations to address challenges ambazo zinakuja na climate change na ningependa kujua what can we expect from Kenya Climate Innovation Center in terms of kuweka fed more money towards uh, such organizations and such innovations um, thank you so much um, there's a lot of opportunity in the climate change space because unajua sasa hivi kila mtu anafikiria how do we ensure that what we are doing is more green how do we ensure that the solutions we are offering are more resilient when it comes to climate change aligusia uh, mambo ya adaptation climate change is mainly addressed through two ways mitigation and adaptation to adapt is to learn to live with it you get and mostly as african countries that is what we need to do building resilience and tunajua uh, kwamba most of what we consume most of what we do inakuja kwa mambo ya biashara so how do you ensure that the solutions that are being provided out there are more green and they help us build resilience mm. now at kenya climate innovation center we support businesses in different value chains whether it's agribusiness katika mambo ya kulima waste management renewable energy water or commercial forestry and uh, for 11 years now to may support more than 3000 enterprises in the country and uh, this support comes in terms of financing this support comes in terms of uh, training capacity building in terms of incubation in terms of mentorship in terms of market access kusaidia hizi biashara ku access market na vile vile kusaidia kwa mambo ya policy advocacy within the national and county government so we have seen and majority by the way I'm, I'm, I'm happy to say that majority of the enterprises ambazo tunafanya nazo are either youth or women owned mm -hmm. one of our our largest program in it was agribiz mm -hmm. uh, and Uh, maneno ya different you know climate resilient agribusiness solutions mm -hmm. in a target specifically women and youth mm -hmm. and we have seen a lot of potential in some of the innovations that these people are coming up with whether it's on uh, you know ensuring that there is uh, no post harvest losses people are innovating around that when you go to something like renewable energy and alternative sources of fuel tunaona watu na come up with briquettes as an alternative to charcoal kule nakuru kuna kampuni inaitwa nawascol they wanatengeneza briquettes from sewage mm wanatengeneza briquettes na briquettes tofauti yake na charcoal ni ni ni, ni, ni you are not burning any tree mm. you get mm -hmm. you are using what we are doing now natumia sodas watu wengine wanatumia sugar cane waste like, kama kule migori kuna kampuni oh. inaitwa vuma biofuels wana tumia sugar cane waste mm -hmm. to come up with briquettes mm -hmm. na hizo zinaweza tumika not just by in domestic places but also by industries so inakuashiria kwamba there's a lot of opportunity in that space ukiangalia maneno ya waste management we have so many organizations so many businesses that we've supported hapa Nairobi kuna kampuni inaitwa Takataka Solutions uh, one so twice utaona utaona magari zao ziki Peter within town it's a waste management business that has basically employed certain innovations kuhakikisha kwamba you can properly manage waste mm -hmm. to conserve the environment kule kisumu kuna kampuni pia ina 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 inaongozwa na very young people inaitwa mtak those are it's a purely youth led business you know wana integrate technology katika kufanya waste collection na katika kufanya value addition to waste so there's a lot of opportunities in the space in terms of support and all that and there are a lot of organizations out there and i would like to tell you know business
business minds, now which are and all that. There are a lot of organizations there that are ready to support. Next year, for instance, in January, to a call for application for a program in waste management. Tunaita SWIFT, mm -hmm. uh, that is Sustainable Waste Innovation for a Future in Transition. I know the Jina Nindefu, but the bottom line ni manu na waste management. How do we properly conserve solid waste in our environment in a way that one, in address climate change, like in a vile vile, in a improved livelihood, in a letter employment, mm -hmm. in a, it brings money, mm -hmm. uh, in a letter person for call, you know? mm -hmm. So those are some of the opportunities that are, that are there. So in this conversation, we should not just look at it from a point of, you know, doom and gloom. Yakwamba, there's so many bad things going on, but how do we tap into the opportunities that are there in this space as well? All right, now I'm assigning me Kimbi Asana, so I'd like to ask a final question. Apia, you can give your final word. Um, zile promise ambazo zili fanika katika Africa Climate Summit na COP28. How, sh how, can, how sure that we can trust those promises, itakuwa zitatimizwa, na zile fans ambazo zimetengwa, zatumika for the right purposes? And what is your final word? Once in a Mrs. Ruth, I love to my Mr. Tobias. Asante. Mm -hmm. Are we sure that the promises will be kept, I cannot say for sure. Ju tume, tumeona and kama kwa kamano la 27 COP27. Kuna zile promises ilikuwa zimewekwa, uh, but to come to COP28, the promises have been broken. And one particular one is iyo ya transition. Badala ya tuonge, then you cut on emissions. Now we are talking about carbon credits. You know, we can pay you, we can pay for our emissions. Mm. So I can pay you to plant a tree for me as I, I admit. Nikito a waste yangu. So wewe, wewe kazi yako ni kunisaidia kutoa waste as I continue. Mm -hmm. Is that how we are going to, to, it is not helping. So keeping the promise is something that for us as organizations that are in advocacy needs to push. Not only organization, but even individuals who are who hold this 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 world uh, dear to them, because it is not for us. Actually, it is for generations to come. We need to keep on pushing, because it is either we act or we act or we act. There is no other way. Mm -hmm. So, keeping the promise is something that we need to hold our government accountable, and we are calling on advocates. And anybody who is in this space to make sure that the promises are made are, are, are kept. Again, as we also hold our governments and uh, the, 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 the other powers, the big boys who are polluting, uh, accountable, what are you doing as an individual? Unajua tunafikiria imambo ya climate change ni imambo ya watu wengine. But as I've said, we either act, all of us, or we perish. So in our own small way, how do we make sure that we are doing something? But we can only do something if we are also informed on how to do it. So those who know, and we are doing very well to inform the public, actually this is a very, I won't congratulate you, because at least you, you, are, you, are, you are letting what wale wako kule vijijini wajue what they can do towards this. So uh, let's all work together to make this possible, because this world belongs to all of us, and all of us need to act. Again, where I come from, women and girls are very dear to us. We are also calling for male champions to see the need of involving ladies, girls, in this conversation, and also helping them to contribute towards the, 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 the adaptation and mitigation measures, because there is some contribution that they can make. Let's start up for girls and women as we also start up for the boy shan who is also being uh, forgotten. That's but, Africa. Yes. <laughs> okay. Asante. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, Shukran. Now, um, I wouldn't want to add much to what she has said because uh, uh, she has put it quite well. Is it a pipe dream or are the yeah. pages going to amount to anything? We are the same COP27 because we are the same one. We are COP28 as we are the same uh, well, uh, let me be optimistic mm -hmm. for the sake of the for the sake of the planet. 
ya kwamba I would say that co 28 unajua the conversation about climate change is very delicate because unaambia mtu stop doing this and inakuletea pesa mm -hmm. and do this which, which might be a bit expensive though it is good for the long term uh, for for the greater good but the problem is many people just see short term you know as uh, yeah short term uh, and all that and that's why we're talking about reducing the conversation to not just profit as a bottom line but people planet and profit yeah so i would say uh, it is not a pipe dream but then i would say we have to keep people accountable just as she has said uh, we need to follow the conversation and this particular bit um, she has already talked about what we need to do as an individual level what i want to emphasize is what us in the space and particularly communication professionals and media organizations what more do we need to do to inform people more to learn more about this conversation about climate change and what you guys are doing is amazing you know bringing this conversation to the people and not just talking about everything else how do we prioritize these narratives of climate change to break it down so that it's not a complex far fetched idea in your own own are you in story about your un unaona hii ni story about your boardroom hiyo ni story of my elite when you are a or something like that kwa sababu hili ni jambo ambalo linatuathiri sisi sote you get so how do we break down that conversation how do we understand in this space what are the obligations of our country what are the obligations of our continent in terms of this nationally determined goals towards climate change how do we hold them to account to ensure that at the end of the day some of these promises are for, are fulfilled the cop28 conversation and all the other cops i would say in a mix of good and bad but i would say going forward we need to walk the talk so that it's not just about kufanya ya kwamba making declarations here and there but actually implementing what has been done but my emphasis my takeaway from this conversation and my appeal especially to the media industry and to other communication uh, experts we break down the conversation about climate change tuache kuzungumzia maneno ya jargons and technical terms we help people understand how this thing affects our daily lives so how can we innovate around it how can we come up with solutions and how can we highlight some of the success stories that have already been achieved within our ecosystem kuonyesha kwamba kuna uwezekano wasisi kufanya hivi na vile. Shukran. Shukran sana na vile mmesema ni swala ambao si wote tunafaa kuzungumzia because it affects all of us. Ndio natoa kwa shukuru kwa kutembelea Radio Jambo. Uh, na ndio kipindi imeisha na